This was a flight that was snake bit bread from the, from the very beginning. And so when the explosion occurred, you know, that was the epitome of the problems. Apollo 13 launched from Kennedy Space Center on April 11, 1970. This would be NASA's fourth manned mission to the moon in less than one year, and the third to land men on the lunar surface in what had become a routine service to and from the Earth. So routine, some believe, that NASA had to add a little drama, because just over two days into the mission, disaster struck. This is Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. yes, oh, Houston, we've had a problem. A large bang first alerted the crew to a problem. Astronaut Jim Lovell then noticed the spacecraft was venting a gas of some sort into space, indicating something more serious. I can't tell you why today, why I looked out the window, but when I looked out the side window, I saw escaping at a high rate of speed, sort of a fan uh, uh, system that, uh, uh, of gaseous substance. And I look to me, looking out the uh, hatch, that we are venting something. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Roger, we copy your venting. It's a gas of some sort. When the decision was taken to send Apollo 13 looping around the moon, rather than attempting to bring it straight back to Earth, the scene was set. Use the moon's gravity slingshot them around. No, the LEM will not support three guys for that amount of time. Apparently. With the command module venting oxygen, the only way the three-man crew could stay alive was by relocating to the ascent stage of the lunar module, which was only designed to support two men on a two-day trip to the lunar surface. The only option was to shut down all but the essential electrical systems to conserve power. Power is everything. What do you mean? Without it, they don't talk to us, they don't correct their trajectory, they don't turn the heat shield around. I, we gotta turn everything off. Now. And yet that was still not enough. Drama, that is. For as the spacecraft drifted off course, the crew used first the descent stage thruster and then the reaction control thrusters in an attempt to bring it back on course in a way that had never been tried before. We are not losing those men. Of course you're not. There was never any question of them coming back alive because they were, and always had been, in the safety of a low Earth orbit. The explosion occurred at just the only place that it could have happened that would re result in a successful recovery. If it happened at any time, after we got in lunar orbit, or when we were on the surface, uh, we'd never have the fuel to get either back up to rendezvous with the command module, or even to get uncaptured by the moon. Like all manned missions to the moon, Apollo 13 was staged, only this time it had to fail. Not because NASA needed to inject some life into their mundane space program, but because they had failed to place the descent stage on the lunar surface during the Apollo 12 mission six months earlier. If you remember, this was the move NASA used to ensure evidence for them having been on the moon was in place before a mission had even launched. It started when they successfully soft landed the descent stage from the Apollo 10 mission in the Sea of Tranquility, ready for the Apollo 11 mission which launched only 55 days later. They successfully soft landed the descent stage from Apollo 11 in the Ocean of Storms, ready for the upcoming Apollo 12 mission. But something went wrong during Apollo 12 that prevented NASA from even attempting to land its descent stage at Fra Moro in anticipation of the Apollo 13 mission. That something was the S-4B. From what is stated in the Apollo 12 mission report, an error in the tracking system 
prompted NASA to slow the S-4B so much on its approach to the moon that it missed the target and ended up in a long and unstable orbit. The Saturn V rocket had been struck by lightning twice shortly after launch, causing temporary instrumentation failure. Whether or not this caused the problem is not known, but needless to say, it arrived too late for NASA to remotely dispatch and soft land the lunar descent stage, without which there would be no evidence that the crew of Apollo 13 had ever set foot on the moon. Though the nail-biting drama that unfolded as the Apollo 13 crew faced the prospect of dying in space was exactly what NASA needed to renew public interest in the Apollo program, they weren't out of the woods just yet. For the next mission to succeed, they still had to soft land the descent stage from Apollo 13 on the moon, which they did, only not at Littrow Crater as planned. Any Apollo mission involved months of preparation, including storyboards, scripts, simulator training, dress rehearsals, geological field trips, and pre-recorded clips of manoeuvres, all of which were geared up to reflect the intended lunar destination, not to mention an entire movie set designed to recreate features of the landing site. NASA wasn't about to let all that go to waste. So having successfully landed the Apollo 13 descent stage, they announced the upcoming Apollo 14 mission would be reassigned. Anyone care to guess where? Look, it's Frau Morrow. I can see our landing site. That's right, Fred. Frau Morrow. NASA successfully landed the descent stage of Apollo 13 in Frau Morrow, ensuring not only the success of the next mission, but also funding for another three missions after that. My thoughts are that the accident of Apollo 13 was the best thing that could happen to NASA. People were getting very complacent. And, and, and so when 13 occurred, at the time that it occurred, because it could have been a complete disaster, which would have probably ruined the whole space program, uh, it was the best thing that could have happened. The explosion occurred at just the only place that it could have happened that would re result in a successful recovery. If it happened any time after we got...